This is the perfect meal for fat loss. I've been a professional trainer for 18 years and I've seen this work 100% of the time. That's why I call it the perfect meal. It's like a treasure map. When you follow a treasure map, it leads to the treasure 100% of the time when you do it, when you follow it. There's so much confusing information out there when it comes to fat loss and when it comes to dieting. The magic here is that it's so simple and it works. The best part about this plan is that it's simple, it's backed by science, and it actually works. Let's get started. The first thing that you have to understand before you start any diet plan is this one scary, scary statistic. It's that according to research, 95% of the people who start a diet plan fail. That means that only 5% <laughs> of all people who start a diet plan will actually succeed. It's a 95% failure rate. That's nuts. So the secret here is not necessarily the strategy, the perfect meal, but you got to combine this meal with the system. So we need to couple this meal strategy with the system that will actually get you to eat it. <laughs> Just like the only way a workout is going to work for you is when you do it a lot. The only way that this meal plan is going to work for you is when you do it frequently, when you do it consistently. So if you wanna become part of the 5%, you need the meal strategy, the perfect meal, and the meal system, which we'll talk about later. So let's start with the meal strategy, with the perfect meal. The first thing is you need to get a small to medium sized plate. And the reason why is because of this. The bigger the plate that you have, according to research, the more food that you're gonna put on it <laughs> and the more calories that you're gonna eat, which means that you're just gonna, you're gonna gain weight just by the size of the plate. Now on this plate, the very first thing that we're going to add is protein, a palm size amount of protein. Now you might be hearing a lot of people saying nowadays, you need more protein. You just need to get a bunch of protein and you're going to be good. The number one reason why you need protein is because it helps you repair and build your muscles after you train, after you break your body down, number one. But the second reason why you need protein is because it decreases your appetite. One study actually showed that there was a, a group of overweight women and all they did was increase the amount of protein from 15% to 30%. And on average, the group of overweight women were consuming 441 calories less per day without even trying, without even intentionally trying to do it. They just did it automatically just from making that one little change with their protein. It's pretty crazy. And since one pound of fat in your body equals 3,500 calories, just do the math. It takes them roughly eight days, roughly a little, like a week, to lose one pound of fat just from adding a little bit of protein to their diet. It's pretty crazy. Now, why is that? Now, imagine you have 400 calories worth of protein like chicken breasts versus 400 calories worth of cereal, like my favorite secret cereal of all time, Honey Nut Cheerios. Highly processed, super sweet. It's like crack cocaine for me. I could eat four servings of Honey Nut Cheerios, no problem, and still not be full. I would want more, but there's no way that I could have four servings of chicken breast. I would be absolutely full. I would be gagging. And here's why. Here's the magic of protein. When you consume protein, it reduces the activity of your hunger hormone called ghrelin, not gremlin, unfortunately. Scratch that. No relationship to gremlins, unfortunately. <laughs> Gremlins will make you lose your appetite. I promise you, they will. So how much protein actually goes on the plate? This is the best part. This is the reason why this system is so awesome. One palm size amount of protein goes on the plate. So you could have one palm size amount of eggs. You can have one palm size amount of chicken breast, one palm size amount of lean beef, of lamb, of fish, of salmon. You could have a palm size amount of squirrel meat or raccoon meat, <laughs> if that's your thing. It's not my thing, but hey, whatever. As long as it's a palm size, it's perfect. And the cool thing is, is that you can mix and match the proteins based on your desire for that day. So if you if you don't like one protein, that's not a problem. You could just switch it up for the next meal. Now, the vegetarian sources of protein include tofu. You could have a palm size amount of beans. You could have a palm size amount of quinoa, palm size amount of tempeh. If you're vegetarian and you don't eat meat, you could have, still have a palm size amount of eggs. I personally am eating way more plant-based uh, protein, more than animal protein, frankly, nowadays. But it's really up to you. It's up to your preference. Now for the carbohydrates. You might be thinking, carbohydrates for fat loss? Absolutely. Especially carbs. Here's why. 
Number one, carbs are your body's preferred source of energy. It, your body you loves fat for energy. Your body can use protein for energy, but it prefers carbohydrates. Another thing is that good carbs can actually lower your blood sugar levels. And we'll go into that in a little bit. The biggest lie, my friend, right now out there is the war on carbs. Athlean X, millions of subscribers online, I'm a fan of his. He's been touting this for years. He eats tons of carbs throughout the day. And he says it's responsible for his ability to lose fat. I'm eating way more carbs than I ever had in, the, in my life. And right now I have some of the lowest, leanest body fat that I've had in years. So why the war on carbs? Back in the 1990s, there was the war on fat. Fat was like the bad guy. And so all these food companies took fat out of their, their processed foods. And what did they do? They replaced it with, guess, sugar. And when they were started loading all these processed foods with sugar, then you started people seeing people gain fat like crazy. You started seeing all these chronic diseases popping up everywhere. And it was because of the poison sugar. Now you have to understand there are two types of carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, which are good and sugar, which is bad, which is poison, which is like crack cocaine. Complex carbohydrates include potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, grains, oats, beans, highly processed foods typically have carbohydrates like highly refined sugars, highly refined flours. You have low fiber pasta, you have cake, you have candy, you have corn syrup. This is all basically poison for your body. Now you might be thinking like, well, what about like the diets like keto diet or the diets like Adkins? Like, don't they make you lose a bunch of weight? They do make you lose a bunch of weight, but it's not fat it's water. You see, when you're eating healthy carbohydrates, the, the carbohydrate molecule helps you hold on to water in your muscle fibers. And so when you cut off all the supply of carbs to your muscles, your muscles start to release all the water. So you lose weight. And a lot of people are associating that with fat, but it's, it's not fat. Here's the thing. And when you finally start eating carbohydrates again, and you will because they're everywhere and you're human and you desire them for a reason, you're going to slip all that water back up and you're gonna gain the weight again. Again, it's not fat, it's water. And when you eat carbs the right way with the right type of carbohydrates, you're gonna have energy all day long and you're gonna be shedding fat like crazy. So how much of the carbs do we actually put on our plate? Here's the best part, it's so simple, ready? A palm size amount of complex carbohydrates. And just like protein, if you get sick of one carbohydrate, you can swap it out for another. So if you're tired of potatoes, you can swap it out for quinoa. If you're tired of quinoa, you can swap it out for another complex uh, carbohydrate that's a whole food source like oats or you can swap it out for rice, whatever your preference is for that day or that moment, that meal. So review, here we go. One palm size amount of protein and one palm size amount of carbs. And the next thing is two palm size amounts of veggies. This is so incredibly vital. This step is one of the most important steps. And this is what a lot of people that I've worked with have skipped out on and it's a big mistake. So you might be thinking, well, I am good on just eating a palm size amount of carbs and, and protein and I don't need veggies. I know that they're good for me, but why do I need it for fat loss? Number one, veggies are high in micronutrients. It's good for vitamins and minerals, but specifically for fat loss is that it's high in fiber. You see veggies are high in micronutrients. They're high in vitamins and minerals, which are great, but they're also high in another nutrient that helps you lose fat, a nutrient that overweight people and clinically obese people are lacking in large quantities in their diet, fiber. Fiber will help you lose fat like crazy. Here's why. When you ingest fiber in the form of veggies, fiber physically takes up room. And when your stomach starts to expand, this triggers the stretch receptors in the stomach wall, sending signals to your brain that you're full, which prevents you from eating more calories. Number two, fiber decreases the hunger hormone, ghrelin, ghrelin the gremlin, the hunger causing gremlin hormone. And this is why fiber switches off your hunger. Without veggies, without that kind of fiber, you're going to be hungry and you're not gonna know why. Now for the last nutrient, fat. Add to the perfect meal one to two thumb size amounts of oil, good oil. Could be avocados, avocado oil, olives, olive oil, coconut oil, fish oil, nuts, nut oil. The fats you wanna avoid, palm oil, vegetable oil, canola oil. And you can add it to your perfect meal by like 
cooking with it. Like in the morning time, I'll put one to two thumb size amounts of avocado oil on the skillet while I'm cooking my eggs. Or you can use it when you're sauteing chicken or any other kind of meat. I'll put the oil in the frying pan and I'll saute it with tofu. That's how I add the oil. Or you can just add the oil after you cook it. Like if you're having a salad, you can put one to two thumb size amounts of olive oil on top. Now here's what I suggest. Don't cook with olive oil. Olive oil actually has what they call a low smoke point. Basically what that means is that when you heat it up, it's gonna denature the oil and it can become toxic. It can become bad for you. When I heard that, I said, are you kidding me? i had been cooking with olive oil for freaking years. <laughs> it's like, okay, great. Now you tell me it's toxic. So what I do is I cook with avocado oil. Avocado oil has a high smoke point, but here is the strategic reason why we want to add fat to your perfect meal is because when you ingest fat, healthy fat, it releases a chemical to your brain called CCK. It tells your brain that you're satisfied, that you're satiated, that you're full. Unless you're eating these healthy fats in your diet, you're not gonna have that satisfied feeling. Now you might be eating healthy food that doesn't taste good to you. And the way that becomes satisfying is when you add healthy oil. One of the biggest mistakes that I've ever made is when I first started eating these, like these perfect meals back in, the, back in my early 20s, and I didn't add fat. And so I would eat these meals and I would feel dizzy, I would feel like crap. But then two hours later, I would be hungry again. I'm like, why am I hungry? And then pretty soon I started really craving things like French fries and potato chips. And I'm like, man, I can't keep this up. And the reason why that I was craving French fries and potato chips is that my brain was looking for the fastest way for me to get the most amount of fat in the quickest way possible. So adding fat to your diet is vital. It tells your brain that you're full and satisfied. And it has nothing to do with ghrelin the gremlin, unfortunately. So here's the meal strategy in review. One palm size amount of protein, one palm size amount of complex carbohydrates, two palm size amounts of veggies on your plate, and one to two thumb size amounts of a healthy fat of some kind, your choice. So now that you have the perfect meal, like how many do you have throughout the day? Do you have any snacks? And here's a general recommendation. You wanna start small, one meal at a time, right? But work your way up to two to three perfect meals per day with, you could have one to two snacks. Now the snacks, you wanna have a high protein snack, could be, you know, like a Greek yogurt, could be a piece of fruit, could be a handful of nuts, but nothing processed. So now that we have this strategy, we have the actual perfect meal. By the way, there's no such thing as a perfect meal. I like to call it perfect meal because I remember the name. Everybody's so different, so we all require different nutrients. But now that we have the strategy, how do we create the system to actually get you to eat this meal often enough so you see results. This next video in the series, so you can click up here, is going to show you exactly what you need to do to create this simple, simple system that will create results. Now I've trained hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people for the last 18 years, almost 25,000 one-to-one sessions. And I would have to be a complete idiot not to see that they're patterns of success that make people successful and make people fail. And so without the system, you will most likely fail. Remember, there's a 5% chance they will actually succeed unless you have the right habit system to make it work consistently. Now, if you wanna take your fitness, your vitality, your energy to the next level, I have a free toolkit. I have a little tiny power packed system that will help you tone, sculpt, strengthen, and build your body with food, with a simple workout program, with mindset tips, all in one little package. So go to the link in the description, click on it, and you can get it in your inbox right away. This has worked for all of my clients throughout the years. It's created so many transformations, and I promise you, these foundational tools will work for you too. Listen to me, no matter where you are in your process, I want you to know that you are so strong and that you have so many gifts inside of you. All you have to do is activate those gifts. You don't have to fix your entire life in a day. Take one positive action today in the direction of the vision of, of your life that you have for you. Don't listen to anybody else. Don't get distracted by outside forces. Stay focused, take tiny baby actions, and watch the magic unfold. My name is Peter Faza. I hope this helps you in some way, and I'll see you next time. If you want more videos and power-packed tools and systems like this one, click subscribe now. I release videos every single week, so don't miss any of these steps. These lessons are vital for your transformation.
See you next time. May the force be with you.